Studies have shown that drivers who are texting while driving take their eyes off the road for about five seconds. That might not seem like a long time, but that's all it takes for someone to walk in front of your car or for someone in front of you to slam on their brakes. Tiffany? Well, tonight, crime tape still surrounds the apartment of Ibrahim Todeshev as the FBI continues to conduct interviews with those involved in the shooting. And tonight, the shooting victim's estranged wife is talking. Statistics show that 67 percent, more than 67 percent of the 55 deaths that were reported here along the Florida waters were unfortunately as a result of drown drowning. Hi, Mike. Well, right now we are driving live on East Main Street, approaching the section that's going to get this massive redesign. Construction is set to start on this stretch of East Main Street uh, in late May, beginning of June, and it should last six to eight weeks. It's Tim. Carol, things are happening as we speak. About five minutes ago, Clemente Pinckney's family arrived here at the Emanuel AME Church. I want to uh, tilt up on the camera a little bit and show you just how many people have shown up here on Cal St Hoon Street in historic downtown Charleston for this final visitation for Clemente Pinckney. Mike. Well, Jeff, we are on Highway 101 just off I-85 in Greer. You can see behind me that Greer police are still on scene here at the Super 8 Motel over this shoulder. I want to show you all the officers over there. This is the side of the building where everything appeared to happen. Now let's show you our exclusive video of the arrest. Take a look. This is the first look that we got of the man. Police say started this standoff around 6 o'clock this morning. They were leading him out of the hotel in handcuffs. Police say uh, everything started at 6 o'clock with a call for help about a suspicious woman in a swimming pool. Police say when they got here to the Super 8, the woman told them that the man you just saw threatened to hurt her and then barricaded himself inside of a hotel room with another woman. About five hours later, this standoff came to an end, but not before. Tactical gear had to come out. Uh, it looked like assault rifles. We heard pops from tear gas canisters, and ultimately they were able to lead that man out of the hotel. Ready, ready, ready. Get You're watching Bronx. A trained seizure alert dog fast and furiously tracked down his owner, 14 year old Chris Carswell. Chris has epilepsy, and this German Shepherd is specially trained to alert others to an oncoming seizure and to track his master in the rare event they're separated. Hey, oh, that's a good boy, Bronx. Oh. He's trained to not bark. Either. And this is Cosmo the Poodle and seven-year-old Abby Zabbitt. Cosmo is also a trained seizure dog, and he's being specially trained to protect his master. He's going to be with me 24-7. Until I'm till 19. So you're 18? 19. 19. Because that's how old he's going to last, Mom, Mom told me. Well, he may very well live a little longer, but nevertheless, the important thing here is that this seven year old now has Cosmo to make sure she lives long. And the dog came from 14 year old Chris and the organization he created called One Boy for Change to help others like him. It was needles and poking and prodding and trying to find out what was wrong and nobody could tell me. And then that was how I made One Boy for Change, to find the silver lining and everything. But you were only a young boy, eight and nine. So you went to mom and you said, hey, I want to do this? Pretty much. You can find One Boy for Change online. It's grown into a nonprofit that provides service dogs for people who need them. Veterans with PTSD, diabetics, and those with epilepsy like Abby. The most important thing is if she has a seizure in the middle of the night and it's a big one and we don't hear her, um, we can't give her her emergency her emergency meds. We don't know to give her her rescue medication, which, you know, is critical for her. Trained seizure dogs like Cosmo actually alert others when their masters are about to have a seizure. Cosmo runs into Abby's parents' bedroom and wakes them up minutes before Abby begins to seize. I think after the first time he alerted, it was the first time I had a really good night's sleep in a long, long time. And Abby is actually having fewer seizures, maybe because she's not so anxious. It helps me stop being scared about me having a bad dream. I like love him. I love him. Like he's like my he's like a brother I never had. I love you, boy. Every good deed has a beginning. Some take a little more time to see through than others. <laughs> 
We pretty much do interiors and cars. But this time, the team at Pro Stitch Upholstery is working on something a little different, something with an emotional attachment. As far as giving, I'm a, I'm a veteran, so yeah, I've had people look out for me different ways, and this is just a good way to give back. This special project made its way to the guys at Wiley's Body Shop. Screws were tightened, one by one, all with a smile. As the pieces came together, their project began to take form. The big reveal came days later, but only one person was able to give final approval, eight-year-old Brianna Cook. Okay, well, we got something to show you that's got an awful lot of pink on it. See what you think about that. That smile said it all. Woodruff Police Chief Alan Bledsoe gave Brianna her first pull. The eight-year-old doesn't like her wheelchair, so she'll be able to use this instead. How about that, huh? Brianna has been through nine surgeries in just a month. She was thrown off the back of a four-wheeler. The chief says the exhaust pipe burned her leg and a tire rolled over her foot. She's been a normal childhood. This has not slowed her down, not, not one bit. From the kind hearts who put it together <laughs> to the happy child enjoying it now. It's very my style. This good deed has come full circle. Corey Davis, WIFF News 4 in Woodruff. We're coming back from North Carolina and we wanted to take a picture with the peach. Three, two, one. Nina Bryson and her friends got that picture though they didn't have fuzzy feelings for the way this interstate icon looks right now. It's a butt. <laughs> Cheeky and a bit true, but we finally got to the bottom of her complaint. It's yellow. It'd be better if it was peachy color. There is an art to turning a lemon into a peach. Just ask Eric Hen. I have been painting water towers for over 20 years. His body of work is about as tall as the tanks he transforms. I've painted anything from uh, dolphins to horses to apples, just whatever city, you know, is what they're known for. Gaffney is known for its peaches. That's why the Board of Public Works turned a boring water tank along I-85 into the sweet seasonal symbol of the city in 1981. I feel very privileged to be the one to come in and do the new paint job. He'll roll and spray on eight to ten shades of oranges. There it goes. And he'll reach the peach with a 150 foot lift. You only fall once. He seems to be more afraid of messing up the work. Each gallon of paint costs $400. When you mix up a batch, you don't want to make mistakes. It's special paint that'll harden and last more than 30 years. Every square you see represents a square foot. Hen's eye for art. It looks like a lemon. Will make the masterpiece mirror the fruit Lynn Young remembers. When we had small children, we would say, here is the beach. We always knew if we were on our way to wherever we were going. By the way, the going rate for an interview about the peachoid is a picture with it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ken is thankful too. I jumped at the chance. He's just starting this tall task and won't be finished for three to four weeks. That's if the weather stays, well, peachy. Mike McCormick, WIFF News 4, Gaffney.